This episode was one of those examples where things can flip so quickly in the game, and it definitely did for two of the Fatefuls. Before that, there was the mystery of the end of episode 5. As I thought, Karin came to deliver the news to Kuzi and Mike that there will be no murder. Instead, they need to put three players on death row. Kuzi wanted to recruit so this twist was not welcomed, though I would have been more annoyed at one less opportunity to get rid of a fateful as there would be one day of no murders. Before this episode, not knowing if it was going to be a death row list, I had thought the traitors should put Kevin and Mary on the list with a third person coming from the mission's winning team, which consisted of Dominic, Gerline, Leroy, Melissa A and Mickey, though Mickey would probably be ruled out as he had found the shield. Kuzi and Mike had agreed that the list should consist of fatefuls as they believed suspicion would fall on a traitor putting themselves on the list. Kevin, Trayvon, May, Mary and Melissa A were discussed as they were considering who they want to get rid of and who is more likely to be banished. A couple of episodes ago, Trayvon would be on the list of likely to be banished but there has definitely been a shift in suspicion about him so murder would be a more likely outcome. While more people are slowly starting to mention Mary, so banishment could be on the cards. It turns out Mary, Kevin and Melissa A were the ones picked for the death row list. What was clear at breakfast is that there were a few people who theorised that a traitor was on the winning team for the puzzle plane mission and had the shield. Dominic was one of those who spoke up about his theory as well as Donna. Everybody already suspected after the mission was done that someone on the blue team was going. They threw a curveball because the traitor themselves had the shield. While he only said it to camera, even Mickey thinks it. Crystal's gone. Somebody on that team had the shield. We got Leroy, we got Mary, we got Kevin, Gerlin, and Kuzi. One of those five has to be has to be a traitor. Mickey's not been shown many times discussing his theories, whether it's to others or in his commentary. I knew the choice to murder someone from the winning plane puzzle team wouldn't be a good idea, especially with members of that team recently dwindling. It has narrowed the list and it's a tangible theory for the faithfuls to run with. The safest bet was to murder from the losing team and no one would have batted an eyelid. It was definitely a bad move by the traitors but mostly for Kuzi as she was on the winning team and Mike wasn't. Some of the faithfuls are starting to look at the more quiet plays, naming Gerlin, Kuzi, Leroy as those type of players. Mary and Melissa A started talking about Kuzi and there's some serious suspicions. I firmly believe someone from my plain puzzle team was a traitor. What are your thoughts about Kuzi? She's always like, deflecting back with a question. She does deflect. Remembering that the recently eliminated Crystal was also suspicious of Koozie. If we're gonna listen to Crystal, she was suspicious of Koozie. She's quiet, she's never put any names out. You put names out, I put names out. Kevin put names out. Mike had only heard May bringing up Koozie's name. Unknown to the both of them, half of the Fatefuls have actually brought up Koozie. With the edit showing Dominic's opinion, I thought this was gonna be a big episode for him. Maybe his opinion would switch and he would actually find a traitor, or have some other pivotal role. Well, I guess what happened was pivotal in one way or another. As I hope you know, I take the integrity of this game very seriously. Last night, in his room, Dominic, who was a faithful, broke one of the rules. Dominic has been asked to leave the game. Oh, <gasps> what? Oh, like this <gasps> serious. What? Did he do? What? what did he do? Oh my God. I thought it was interesting Karin had revealed his role as a fateful, as that hasn't necessarily been the case in other versions. I guess the traitors inadvertently benefited from Dominic's elimination with one less fateful. With only those on death row able to win the shield and placed as team captains for the mission, Mary found herself in the unfortunate position of unknowingly picking the traitors for her team. Kuzi was of no help, partially on purpose and Mike was the only one to find a changed object in the room. From the three teams, only $3,000 was added to the prize pot out of a possible $9,000. Kevin's team won, so Kevin won the shield, but that later proved to be of no benefit to Kevin. Coupled with no one listening to Melissa A's earlier suggestion of not voting for someone on death row, I think you can get the gist of where this banishment vote went. I feel like this was the round table where the most people spoke and the most names were brought up. 
Maybe those that weren't on death row felt more free to speak as they didn't have the looming weight of potentially being murdered. It's also where at first I felt the least confident in predicting where the votes were going to end up and who was going to be banished. Charlene, you don't really say that much. You just sit there looking all cute. There's nothing you really say or contribute. She just talks and talks and talks and talks and doesn't let anyone talk. I was thinking of my dog the whole time Melissa was talking. When Donna talks, I want to honestly stab myself in the eye. Gurleen was really feeling it, providing the unexpected comedy commentary to accompany the roundtable discussions. It sounds like she was just over certain people talking. Kevin really shot himself in the foot. I'm trying to get to the end with people I believe in, and I don't see how you would ever take me to the end. I don't see how you would ever work with me, how you would ever say anything useful to me. But as we progress, if there's some faithfuls that just aren't working with me and aren't adding anything, if they have to go home, bye-bye. He had the protection from murder, but that round table was one of the examples of the quickest way to get yourself banished. From all the names heard throughout the day, he was one of the least. There would have been those that weren't going to vote for him, but ended up doing so because of what he said, which was mainly directed at Trayvon, but also part of his alliance. Kuzi felt annoyed by Kevin's move and her vote seemed to be in retaliation to Kevin mentioning her name, despite their alliance. Melissa A is going to be a problem for the traitors if they don't get rid of her. She made it a point to talk to Leroy about Kevin's suspicions of Koozie and especially Mike. We have to wait until episode 8 to see if Mary or Melissa A are the traitors' latest victims.